yesterday I was I, I, I was called upon to come and speak and so I didn't sleep till almost 4 a.m. to be able to touch on and be very brief on the matters plaguing Nigeria. When we talk about a new tribe, raising a new tribe of patriots, the first thing that comes to my mind is human life. And so that's the area that I want to come from today. Thank you very much for all your contributions. I've taken down a lot of notes. But today I want to speak about the human life. Any man's death diminishes me because I am involved in mankind. This is a quotation from John Donne. The true work of a people is measured by the values they place on human life. In Nigeria today, I'd like to ask, what is a human life worth? I just ask the question, I, I, I don't like to just speak on my own. What is a Nigerian life worth today? When you have young people protesting at a toll gate, singing the national anthem, and they are shot at. Whether black bullets or not, it just goes to show that they will put the gun barrel in your face to scare you and to turn you away. It just goes to show that there is many, any respect or regard for the Nigerian life. How many of us watched the good, the bad, and the ugly growing up? Yay! I wasn't allowed to watch until I was a lot older. And I was speaking with one of my mentors and he mentioned it. He's sitting here right now and I knew him before he called his name. And he said something always stuck with him when he watched The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. There was a quotation at the very beginning that said, Where life has no value, sometimes death had its price. And that is why the bounty killers appeared. Today, our roads are right with kidnapping. So the bounty killers have appeared because it would seem as if life has no value, but death has a price. So there's a lot of kidnapping. It comes at a price. It comes at a price of all of us now not being able to take our children home to our remote areas and to the villages. A great good number of us, even some of us that grew up outside the country, had the privilege of going to see our grandparents at home. And those were the things that made us who we are. But then I'm beginning to ask, where are our core values? Let's talk about an accident that happened that the video went viral. How many of us saw where people were there was a head of collision with a, with a fuel tanker and you could see in the video people who were injured trying to get their bearing, trying to get up, all bloody. But then there was, in the same video, a queue of almost 30, 40 people who had placed a premium on petrol or diesel than human life. What is a human life worth? That means a human life is worth what? 10 liters of fuel. How much is that? Less than 7,000 naira. That's where we're at. One of the speakers said, oh, we know all the problems in Nigeria, and so we wanted to put further solutions. No, I said, we must keep speaking to the issues. We must keep, you know, laying them bare. Because I think that's where we have lost the sense of who we are. And then we decide to hide behind the cloak of ethnicity, of tribalism. Because we don't talk about these things. We don't say to one another, this is wrong. If you do, you're, you're considered an enemy. Only recently, Zakara State has been in the news for all the wrong reasons. Just recently, in 
another viral video to a thank you for social media. In another viral video, in the recent, the recent past government has been accused of depriving age, aged retirees of their pension. People who have served Nigeria for 35 years plus have been robbed. And that's just one state, mind you. Who knows how many other states where the aged have been robbed of their pension. So they have no pension. And their children see these things. Their grandchildren see how their service to Nigeria has plunged them into penalty. That's a problem. And the problem again is that we are not asking questions. Just this morning I read in the news and I almost cancelled this part about the Zafar State Government. But I said no. People should ask, is that true? Because the, um, the, the present Minister of State for Defence has come out to say, oh, people are just trying to lie or against him so that he can be removed as minister. He didn't speak to the issue. Are we going to keep sweeping matters under the rug? Because it would seem as if the government has now rewarded this government with an executive, with, with a position in government. We all know that Zafara State has been insecure. So how is it possible that this same person has been made Minister of State of Defense and we are all sitting down comatose? Let's look at Imo State just day before yesterday, where the INEC representative asked the media to leave a meeting, a converging of parties. How are we now saying that the media are no more stakeholders? When you begin to shut out the media, when you begin to shut out the eyes and the ears and the mouth of people, that in itself is not a that in itself is an autocracy. So I've always said it, I'll say it again, we have strong men and not strong institutions, unfortunately. So my question is how do we build this new tribe when we continue sweeping matters under the rug? We allow those who lead us, we allow them to create smoke screens. And then they'll now call those smoke screens committee, committee of women, this one. Committee of students, this one. And then, like, focus, focus, magic. No answers. Nothing ever comes out of these committees. And then, we just go back. As if they've grown us. And then we don't say anything. You know? I, I guess say, it's either we compartmentalize our trauma in Nigeria, or we just choose to jump out. You see, there are some of us that are Nigerian born, Nigerian born, one of my secondary school mates is here. We're not going anywhere, and we're raising our families here. So this country is ours, and it's ours for the taking, for the right reasons. Nothing better illustrates this more than the very tragic case of a promising young lady called Greatness cut down in her prime on the 28th of September 2023 by a civic, by criminal syndicate popularly, popularly known as One Chance. The first thing, please when we leave here or even while we are here, Google greatness. The first thing you notice, I go to images, is her smile. And when you leave here, there are videos about the kind of things that she was already doing in her little community. That girl had a voice, she had a smile, she had a tenacity to make Nigeria greater, just as her name implied. But her life was cut short. And to make it worse still, she was taken to the Metama General Hospital and the doors of that same hospital were slammed shut in her face. So for 15 minutes, this young promising woman was in her own blood on the cold concrete floor while her life slowly ebbed away. The manner in which she died shows us that we have lost our humanity. Somebody
nobody could have taken a blanket and at least covered her. Somebody could have gone to her to say, hang in there, something, something was left. Some of us treat our dogs better than we treat human beings. Some of us treat our cats and our pets better than we treat other human beings. In the news a few weeks ago, Niger Delta, there was an explosion. And I followed that story very keenly. These young people were engaged in illegal refining, refining of crude oil. And they'll say to you for free, I can't fish, I can't farm, because our land has been destroyed by the exploration activities. So if we stay here, we die. So we'd rather take a chance on a suicide mission, make some money, and survive for the next day. So you can imagine that fellow Nigerians would rather be on a suicide mission than to live on their land and go free. Because they can't wait for their government. They tell you they can't wait for the government. The government does not think that a Nigerian life should have the decency should, to live, live a decent life. That is the oil rich part of Nigeria. I'm sure there are some Niger Delta here. That, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you.